After studying this module, you shall be able to define thinking, identify the units of thought, understand different types of thinking, and state the stages in creative thinking. For now, let us try to familiarize ourselves with how is thinking defined. Early thought on thinking and knowledge proposed two sides of the argument. The empiricist maintained that knowledge comes from experience. The nativist suggests that knowledge is based on the innate characteristics of the brain. These pre-existing categories exist inside the brain, which order sensory experience and make us think about it. There are three basic ideas about thinking and these are that thinking is cognitive that is it occurs internally in the mind. Thinking is a process that involves manipulation of various cognitive processes in the brain and thirdly thinking is directed and results in behavior that solves a problem and leads one towards solution. Now let us try to understand the units of thought. The processes of thought rely on the units of thought such as images, symbols, concepts, prototypes and rules. So images, symbols, concepts, prototypes and rules become the foundation blocks of thinking and cognitive activity to take place. They help to represent, manipulate and reorganize reality and also devise effective and efficient ways of acting on it. These help us reason and apply logic to engage in decision making processes. Now let us move to different types of thinking. Thinking, logic and reasoning are intertwined and are inseparable. Aristotle introduced a system of reasoning or simply validating arguments by what is called syllogistic reasoning. A syllogism has the following three steps. A major premise, a minor premise and a conclusion. Inductive thinking or inductive reasoning is a form of thinking that involves drawing conclusions by applying logic and reasoning from the particular to the general. It is a process in which a person makes some simple observations of a certain kind and these observations are generalized to a different problem to make decisions that is one infers from a special case or observation to the general principle. Now from here we can move on to what we mean by convergent and divergent thinking. It typically occurs in a spontaneous, free-flowing manner where many creative ideas can be generated. In classrooms, learners are given tasks of free writing, drawing. All these promote generation of multiple and novel responses that diverge from the standard normative responses. A divergent thinker may come up with creative and more flexible responses. Wallace described the four sequential stages of creative process which gave us a conceptual framework to revisit creative thinking. These stages are not supported by 
sound empirical evidence but the psychological literature finds its mention in the introspective reports from people who have given creative thoughts these will be discussed in the next section briefly introducing it the four sequential stages of creative process are preparation that is formulating the problem and making initial attempts to solve it incubation leaving the problem while considering other things illumination achieving insights to problem and lastly verification testing or carrying out the solution we move on to the third stage which is the stage of illumination the history of creative thought has numerous instances of creative breakthroughs it is not mandatory that after a period of incubation an illuminating thought will appear but in cases where it has happened the bits and pieces of all the ideas fall into place these ideas then seem to complement each other and all irrelevant thoughts almost become discarded hypotheses the structure of a dna molecule the composition of benzene ring the invention of the telephone are all examples of creative breakthroughs achieved after illumination while you read some words are you thinking even when you stop thinking about what you are reading will you still be thinking it could be that you still think perhaps of something else we are thinking during most of our waking hours it is hard not to think have you ever thought about what we do when we think in this particular module we will address how thinking is conceptualized you will be acquainted with different types of thinking and you will also know what is meant by creative thinking along with this we will also try to find out what are the stages of creative thinking psychologists have tried to find answers to one of the most fascinating and important questions how do people think we will begin our discussion on thinking by trying to unravel how do cognitive psychologists understand thinking cognitive psychologists have been intrigued by the most fundamental question of what is thought and how do we think for centuries these two arguments when viewed historically suggest that experience leads to information and our brain must be receptive to these experiences to be able to think about it and make sense of it the foundations of cognitive psychology lie in the gestalt psychology of wax berdimer wolfgang koller and kurt kofka and also in the work of jean piaget who provided a theory of children's cognitive development cognitive psychologists investigate various dimensions of thinking in terms of internal cognitive or mental processes such as reasoning logic problem solving memory and language the study also includes how people make decisions and choices and engage in creative discovery cognitive theory contends that solutions to problems take the form of algorithms an algorithm is a rule that correctly generates the solution to a problem given that one can devote sufficient time and energy and effort to applying the rule and also cognitive theory contends that solutions to problems can be done through heuristics heuristic refers to a rule of thumb or a general theory or strategy that may lead to a solution reasonably quickly with less computation costs and solutions may also be found through insights which involve sudden awareness of relationships advances in cognitive psychology on account of research on reasoning logic decision making and so forth have contributed in unfolding thinking these concepts are closely tied to thinking 
and help us complete and understand the rubric of thinking. So thinking is a process by which a new mental representation is formed through change, through reorganization and transformation of information stored in the memory. It includes a complex interaction of cognitive actions such as judgment, reason, imagination, logic, problem solving and decision making. We will study some of these aspects of thinking in depth in this module and some in the subsequent modules that help us cognize and think. Give yourself a minute and list down several ways in which you try to cognize information from your environment and represent that information in your mind. The most primitive of all these units of thought is an image. An image is a visual mental representation of an event. Another important unit of thought is symbol. A sound, object or design that represents an object of utility. The most common symbol in thinking are words. A characteristic of a word that separates it from an image is that it is a symbol that stands for something other than itself and a single symbol may have more than one meaning. The advantage of thinking symbolically is that symbols enable us to think about things that are not present in the immediate environment and may have been present either in the past or may be present in the future. In addition to that, symbols transcend boundaries of now and then and even make it possible to imagine things and situations that never were or never will be. You may have used numbers, letters, punctuations, icons and other mathematical signs for ideas that have no concrete existences. When a symbol is used as a label for a class of objects or events with at least one common attribute or for the attribute that is for a class or category itself then it is called a concept. Animals, liquid, vehicles are examples of concepts with common attributes. Concepts are helpful in organizing otherwise large amount of information into chunks that are manageable to think about. Concept formation help us understand categories of thought and processes behind it. This will be taken up in detail in the other modules of cognitive science. When we think of a concept, we think of a representative example. What comes to your mind when you hear the word noodles or think of a vehicle? The prototype is the most representative example of a concept. Most often it is simply an example that has most of the characteristics of the particular concept. In addition to that, say the idea of a bird may not be an individual but some combination of attributes that allow us to identify what is a bird and also helps us discriminate what is not a bird. Besides this, a rule is a complex unit of thought that navigates us through the relationship between concepts. Logic and reason are shortly discussed in the next section while decision making will be taken up in the next module. People think by different ways. Some of these form the unifying thread of the subsection that follows. You may have noticed that two people who may have been given a particular problem may come up with different solutions to the same problem. How is this possible? This is so because they may have worked on the problem with different logic. One may be logical and other may be illogical. Rational thinking and rational decision making is logical and 
makes an individual avoid wandering aimlessly and exploring odd unachievable options it channelizes energy in the doable and achievable terms and saves time and power this thinking is called directed thinking while illogical thinking occurs when an individual is not goal directed and problems at hand are ill defined let us now try to understand how we apply logic to the problem in hand and thereby reach possible solutions to understand this better let us have a look at the example suppose the major's premise states all men are mortal and the minor premise states socrates is a man so the conclusion that can be drawn is therefore socrates is mortal here it is possible to reduce the statements of facts to symbols and manipulate them as in mathematical equations without regard to the physical reality that they may represent if the premise of a syllogism is true and the form correct then the conclusion of the argument is valid that is the probability of the conclusion being correct is certain here the correctness of the thought process is based on the form rather than on the content of sentences deductive thinking involves drawing conclusions by applying logic and reasoning from the general to the particular you may start with a general theory of sun rises in the east and apply this to the specific situation of your own home or room that the sun will rise to the east of my home or my room however in real life it may not be easy to accept the conclusions drawn from a particular syllogism which may be true yet the effects of content in the judged validity of an argument may render it unacceptable this reminds us that the cognitive process is neither simple nor devoid of previous knowledge stored in the long term memory the information stored in our memory influences how any new piece of information is perceived encoded stored and transformed all these determine how we think about that information or about any particular piece of information in everyday life ordinarily we do not make decisions based on well reasoned syllogistic paradigm but in terms of inductive reasoning here the decisions are based on what is perceived as the best choice of a number of possible alternatives as we have mentioned above people think in several ways jp gilford in 1967 distinguished between two types of thinking that is as convergent and divergent thinking to develop an understanding of the two let us think of an answer to the question what is the capital of india you may have obtained the answer new delhi is the answer given by you and the one given by your friend the same this questions open up the scope to understand different types of thinking much of the pedagogy emphasizes this type of thinking called convergent thinking in which there is a single correct solution and the students are encouraged to produce factual information only to come convergent up with convergent thinking is a type responses. of thinking one that needs focuses to manipulate on single existing knowledge well established by means of standard procedure convergent Here thinking knowledge is considered fixed. one's ability to At give least one for correct some point of time to the standard question it is usually a product it of one's accumulated set of knowledge logic simply and is usually obtained by recognizing and does not provide a scope for by any applying different testing or pre mastered it is techniques. most effective in situations where there exists an already established answer and one simply needs to recall it through various decision making decisions here 
there isn't space for ambiguous responses the answers either fall into the category of right or wrong these answers do not require any creative thinking on the part of the person most of the standardized items on intelligence tests and other standardized multiple choice tests are based on convergent thinking now try to answer this question what can be made out of a sheet of parachute cloth compare your answers with other friends who answer the same question are their answers more novel and creative as compared to yours or otherwise did you get new or novel responses on the first question also in contrast to convergent thinking divergent thinking involves free flow of thoughts and there are many possible solutions they may utilize ideas and objects in more abstract ways and come up with a number of unusual ways of thinking in the next section we will approach thinking with regard to creative problem solving and its stages we reasonably assume that human beings are creative beings and they are endowed with the capacity to solve problems creatively some of us may be more creative than the others for this module among widely used definitions of creativity we choose to understand it as a cognitive activity that results in a new and novel way of viewing a problem or a situation restricting ourselves to finding solutions to problems in habitual ways only and not attempting alternate ways of thinking about the same problem is termed fixation in problem solving to achieve better clarity let us understand these stages in detail the first stage is the stage of preparation when we are confronted with a problem we often spend a considerable amount of time preparing to deal with the problem in this thinking time we think about several tentative solutions during which we try out or reason out possibilities based on our experiences in the past these tentative thoughts lead us to specific direction that may later prove instrumental in finding solutions to the problem however the time for this preparation as mentioned by people may not be restricted to some hours or some days only indeed the biographies of famous creative people are replete with instances where they mention that from their early childhood ideas kept developing in their mind these early ideas frequently shape the ultimate destiny of a creative person but this thought may be challenged and debated as to why individuals who share similar environments have different degrees of creative thought the second stage of creative thinking is termed as incubation period have you ever experienced that after a point of saturation you stop thinking about the problem which seemed so compelling at a point why is that a creative breakthrough follows a period in which the problem is allowed to lie dormant posner suggested that these dormant periods allow us to recover from the fatigue associated with problem solving this time lapse may also help us forget inappropriate and unsuccessful approaches to problems which were used in the past experiences it could also be possible that during this incubation period we may actually be working on the problem unconsciously there may be a reorganization of the material for problem solving in the mind the last stage is called the stage of verification after you rake off illumination that sometimes accompanies an insightful discovery the idea is tested in this stage the creative product is examined to verify its legitimacy 
there stands the risk that the solution achieved by illumination may not be actually valid. Hence, it becomes important to test, verify and validate it. This brings us to the closure of this module. Let us quickly summarize what we have already studied. The first important thing is, thinking is a process by which new mental representation is formed through change, reorganization and transformation of information stored in the memory. Cognitive psychologists investigate various dimensions of thinking in terms of internal cognitive or mental processes such as reasoning, logic, problem solving, memory and language. The processes of thought rely on units of thought which are images, symbols, concepts, prototypes and rules. Deductive thinking involves drawing conclusions by applying logic and reasoning from the general to the particular. Inductive reasoning involves drawing conclusions by applying logic and reasoning from the particular to the general. Guilford distinguished between two types of thinking which are convergent and divergent thinking. In convergent thinking, there is a single correct solution and the students are encouraged to produce factual information only. In contrast to convergent thinking, divergent thinking involves free flow of thoughts and there are many possible solutions to a particular problem. There are four sequential stages of creative process which gives a conceptual framework to revisit creative thinking. The stages include first preparation, second incubation, third illumination and last verification.